So next we're going to compile the kernel. So let's now go to sources. Um, I'm actually going to download a config file that I'll use um, for testing. I had some issues getting a kernel working. Um, I tried to set some settings and disable others and I think I shouldn't have done so. If you just use the kernel from Linux from scratch 1.0 and then do an old config, make old config, which I'll show you in a moment, um, and just ensure that the hardware drivers are installed for the machine you're installing on, then it should be okay to use as it is. So I'm going to go to... Yeah, one thing I've noticed, and I think this is the case with Linux from scratch 1.0, is that DNS didn't work. So if I put in ppro200... Uh, okay, we haven't got links on this, have we? I'll do it in this window here. So if I cd lfs sources. So this is outside of the truth at the moment. Um, and I th seem to remember it seems to be the case with Linux from scratch 4.0. It doesn't quite work properly. Um, xterm equals, sorry, xterm equals xterm. Uh, sorry, that should be term. All oh, right, that has worked this time. Yeah, I had problems in that case getting Linux from scratch for working with DNS um, externally. Internally, it works fine, but externally, I couldn't seem to get it to work properly. So whether there's extra settings that need to be made to get that to work properly, I don't know. But internally, which is good enough for me at the moment, um, I did have problems. Uh, so, uh, in fact, that looks like that hasn't worked. Okay, so I've got this configuration file here, so I'm just going to download this. Save that to disk. And quit. I'll just check that. Okay, I just need to get rid of this header which seems to come down from the server for some reason. This doesn't happen except for on, on LFS 1.0. So that looks okay. Let's save that. So we're in sources. We've got the config there which I'm going to reuse. Uh, there it is there. So let's now extract the kernel. J.
Okay, that's finally done. So let's move into it. First thing we do is to do make MR proper to ensure the source directory is clean, properly clean. So normally, um, best thing to do would be to make a default config. Um, as I say, if you've got Linux from scratch 1.0, you can copy that config file and do make hold for config. I'm just going to copy in there uh, config file I've prepared previously, call it .config, then run make old config to update it if necessary. And then I'm going to do make menu config just to double check that everything looks okay. Um, so let's just check that the right process reset, which is, is Pentium MMX, um, and probably the next most important thing is networking is set, so that's fine, and then the disk drivers are set so that it can actually boot. Um, and yeah, that looks all okay. So it does look pretty reasonable what's there. <clears throat> yeah, it looks all good. So I'll save that as it is, let it update anything it might need to. Then I'm going to run this make dep. <clears throat> Okay, and now we can actually build the kernel itself. So time is just to get an idea how long it takes and wait for it to complete.
Okay, that's the kernel that has been built in half an hour. Now I'm going to run, run make modules, but um, I think I've got them turned off, so it'll probably give me some sort of message saying that. Yes, it has. So make modules installs not going to do anything either. But if you have got modules set to be built, then you'll definitely want to do those. Now I've got to copy the um, appropriate files to the boot partition, um, but that's not mounted at the moment. So let's mount boot. Um, couldn't find it in the etc. Okay, I forgot to add that in. So I'll add that in here. Slash dev slash hda two is my boot partition. Gets mounted at boot. It's an ext2, and I'll use no auto. This actually works in Linux from scratch four now. Um, I'll put dump one and order two. So let's retry that. Yep, that's worked. So we can now see that there. Look at the boot, and you can see there's the images for Linux and Scratch one as well as um, Suze. So I think Suze is that's the kernel image, and that's the kernel for Linux and Scratch one. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do first of all is to copy the kernel. Now, as you can see, the kernel for well, the kernel name, even for Suze, is very non-descriptive just vm liners the one from linux from scratch right it tells us what operating system it is and what version of the operating system but it doesn't tell us what version the kernel is so what i'm going to do this time is to because we're starting to collect a few kernels and possibility if i do carry on building later linux from scratches on top of this one um there's going to be a few more in there so i'm going to call this vm Linux dash and then the kernel version which is 2.4.19 dash LFS dash 4.0 so it gives me an idea of um, what that image is all about I'm going to do a similar thing with system map if I copy system map as it is like that it will overwrite the system map that's used by well, looks like Suze actually because I don't think system map was copied in Linux from scratch um, so that could potentially cause problems so once again I'm going to give this a version in a similar way that we do with the modern Linux from scratches um, just by pending the version the kernel version so two dot 4.19 again and likewise although it's not in here I'm going to copy the config file for the record because it's not stored in the kernel as it is in modern kernels uh, we can store the config and even access it through the proc uh, virtual file system interface so I'll copy that as well as config-2.4.19 so that'll be there for posterity So you can see there's this, you can see the size of the symbol maps grown. It's almost double the size to the previous version. Um, that would be the Suze version, I imagine. Um, and there's the kernel. Again, that's grown quite a lot. That's nearly double the size of the Linux from scratch 1.0. <clears throat> and finally, the config file, which is the only one there at the moment. So move on now to making the system bootable. So what we've got to do is to, let's just read this, in order to be able to boot the LFS system, we need to update our bootloader. We're assuming that your host system is using Lilo, which it is, we will not be running Lilo program inside Troop. Running Lilo inside Troop can have side effects. 
So it looks like they're actually copying the Linux from scratch kernel. So they copied the image to the boot as LFS kernel. And they're copying the boot kernel into boot. Oh, I see. So that's into the host boot. But because I'm sharing the boot, there is no concept of different boots, i.e. one for the um, new system and one for the current running system. They are the same effectively through what we've just done. There's just one partition where everything is shared. So I won't be doing that, that command. So what I'm going to do is to log out, skip that copy command. What I'm going to do now is to edit the lilo.conf. Uh, so this will need Vim. So remember we're on the base host system now. Um, and I'm going to add in, uh, that's the Sue's image here. I'm going to add in this image at the top, so, so it should become the default. So image, uh, let's copy this. Right, well, that's going to be actually something different because I renamed it. So rather than guess, I'm going to Uh, no, LFS boot. It's not mounted on the root system. This is obviously other stuff that's there that's been copied in there by the looks of it. <clears throat> in fact, I should mount the boot here. Uh, Oh yes, it's rimmed out because it doesn't do auto boot. So I've just decided to re remark it out. So I've got to actually explicitly type in, if I show you the host FS tab, um, I tried no auto and that's not recognized. So rather than have the boot mounted every time a boot when it's not really needed until situations like now, I've remarked that line out so that it doesn't get mounted. So all I need to do, is to mount it explicitly. Okay, it's already mounted in the truth, so let's unmount it. Come out and retry that. So in the host, there you can see the new Linux from scratch for um, kernel. So let's go back to editing lilo.conf. So that's the name of the image that I want to boot from. And then we need to copy the label in, which is going to be, I'll call it LFS 4.0. The root will be slash dev slash hda7 uh, let's put some spaces around these okay and also set it to be read only as well at boot in case there's any problems with the mounting or with the booting that it's less likely to get the uh, system trashed. So that should be it. So let's exit from that and do Lilo minus V as it says here. And as you can see, it's added Linux to scratch four with that boot image. We've got the original Linux to scratch one and the original host SUS 6.1 and then this DOS one which I've put in there but I'm not actually using at the moment. Okay, what I should do now is to copy that Lilo file to the LFS um, 
ETC so that it's available within our newer environment um, because the chances are we might want to make some changes and rerun Lilo and if that file is not there then it's not going to be able to build the new boot options so I'll copy that there let's put a minus V in so we can see what we're doing so that's okay and then it says the last step is synchronizing the host Lilo configuration with the LFS system um, So we've just done this bit, that's fine. What's this doing? Looking for anything. Beginning with image in lilo.conf. Let's have a look, see what that outputs. Not quite sure what it does. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's looking inside. Um, oh, let's do X term here. Oh, that should be echo actually, shouldn't it? Not cat. Oh, right. Yeah, what it's doing, I can see now, yeah, what it's doing is it's copying all the images. So it's looking inside. Um, for every line in lilo.conf has got the word image. It's looking inside that file and copying it to boot. Uh, looks like that's what that's doing. So again, because we're sharing the boot partition, it's unnecessary um, to do that because they obviously already exist in the same place. So all there is left to do is to reboot and test this out now that we're able to boot into it and check that we can actually get into it. So let's move on to the end. Um, this bit's about stripping, which I say I'm not gonna do. I might do it at the very end, but I'm not gonna do it now. I'll create this file so that we know <clears throat> what version this is. Get counted, reboot into the system. So I think proc is already unmounted, is it? No, it's not. Unmount LFS. It's busy. Are we inside it here? Maybe. Yes. That's done. And all we need to do is to shut down and reboot it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down completely. Um, switch the recorder over to the machine so you can see the screen directly and then boot it up and we'll see how it goes. So I'll do shutdown minus H to alter, halt it. 